Laura, I have this coming up on one o'clock. Do you want me to go ahead and get started? Yes, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, welcome everybody uh, to this session. Uh, my name is Brett King. I'll be your moderator for the session. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so this is the introduction to humanizing on, online learning with Laura uh, Pazell. So Laura is uh, one of our one of our instructional designers at uh, the Center for E-Learning and Connected Environments at UCO. She also serves as a board member for our Center for Teaching and Learning. She has a number of degrees. Uh, one a bachelor's in liberal arts, a master's in organizational management, and also a master's in instructional design, various backgrounds in instructional design, teaching, and higher education, um, and as well as um, a 14 years background in higher education in general. Um, she lives here in Edmond with her son and husband, Mark. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Laura, to get us started. Okay, thanks so much, Brett. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. So we're gonna go ahead and start with some screen sharing. And this is the 2022 Oklahoma Learning Innovation Summit, Introduction to Humanizing Online. So in today's uh, webinar, we're gonna be covering definition of humanizing online teaching what is humanized facilitation, instructor's presence. So the first thing I want to start with is everyone write in the chat what humanized online teaching means to you or what you think it might mean. So just start writing in anything you can think of. Okay, so let's see, we have striving to make connections between instructors and students, students and students. And Sephra says making it more personal. Brad building opportunities like community building. So these are all really great ideas connecting with the person actually teaching. It's a really great one, Thomas. Okay, so now we're gonna go over what the definition is. So what is humanized teaching, humanized online teaching? It supports the effective and cognitive dimensions of learning at a distance, and it begins with the human presence and trust to foster instructor-student relationships that build the intellectual capacity of diverse students, and it draws upon culturally responsive teaching. The validation theory, social presence, and universal design for learning, and applies them in the online environment. So that's a lot of stuff to think about, right? <clears throat> but I think it's good to have a starting point. So I'm going to just explain to you how I learned about humanized online teaching. So this was back in probably like, say, I don't know, I think 2008. And I had, um, I had my son, he was about two years old, he was gonna be starting preschool. So I wanted a job where I could work from home and he wouldn't have to be in preschool for eight hours a day. And so um, I was working for this, um, this college, it's a private college actually, they specialize in allied health care degrees. And they decided to put all their classes online and they weren't really exactly sure how to go about that. But they said, you have to have a discussion every week and it has to be very rigorous, even though nobody really knew what that meant. And so what happened was, is I just started automatically chatting with my students because I really liked that. I mean, I, know, I don't know about some of you, but sometimes I find working from home to be isolating, you know, while my son was gone at preschool, you know, was there by myself. And so I just started creating all these messages for students and funny videos and just stuff like that to pass the time. And so I really enjoyed it. I was having a great time. Then I started doing some professional development and I found out um, about this introduction to humanizing class. And so when I took the class, I realized a lot of the things that I was already doing is part of humanizing. And so I was really excited to find uh, that it was, 
important and it was just so important to me and my teaching since I really loved um, teaching online. And, and that's when I started to learn more and take more classes through this group called the Online Network of Educators. And one of their um, uh, facilitators is Michelle Bikansky Brock, and you'll find she's done so much work on humanizing online. Um, and I'm gonna be sharing some of her work in our presentation today. So now we're gonna talk about humanized facilitation, which includes presence, empathy, and awareness. So presence is when you create your uh, lively week, uh, welcome videos, weekly messages to your students through announcements, emails, overview pages, and so on. Using a conversational style when communicating with your students. And then empathy is talking about, you know, being approachable, checking in with your students and sending out supportive messages, you know, for students that are struggling. Um, we also talk about awareness and with awareness is sending out some student surveys in week one and asking them questions like, what can I do to help you to be successful in this course? Or another really important question is, do you have any personal challenges that might hinder your success in completing this course. And then having a, a fun and low risk icebreaker to help students get connected. So we're going to stop sharing and do the icebreakers now. Examples of icebreakers. So post in the chat an example of an icebreaker that you have used before that you uh, found to be um, fun and invigorating for your students in online classes. Okay, daily attendance questions. As Simon says, he has his students record short videos oh, introducing themselves. Okay. Are you using Flipgrid, Simon? You can unmute yourself if you want to add a comment. Okay, the, in Canvas, okay, gaming. Suzanne uses a cool poem. Oh, I like that idea. Do you have like a, a selection of different poems that you use, Suzanne? No, it's really not. It just talks about themselves. So it says, you know, I come from, and then there's a blank and it'll say, uh, you know, give two characteristics of the place you grew up, you know, things like that. Oh, okay. So it keeps students from saying, I'm taking principles of management. I plan to graduate in three semesters and it takes out the boring. So it's actually fun for me to read them and see if I can find commonalities that I can then comment on to build that relationship. Okay, that's a really neat idea, I like that. <clears throat> Does anyone else have something they'd like to share about a icebreaker? Okay, so a few other ideas, innovative uh, icebreakers. Obviously, you know, we always use personal introductions, um, you know, listing your personal interests, uh, what's the favorite place you like to go for a uh, vacation, your favorite hobby. And uh, this is another one, two truths and a lie. And so that seems like that would be a fun activity too, um, to try to figure out what's true and you know what's, what's not. So that's really important is making that personal connection. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're gonna go and do a little more screen sharing. Okay, so now we're gonna be talking about instructor's presence. So presence involves the intentional efforts to construct your authentic self to ensure that students know you're on this journey with them. And so one of the ways that we can do that 
uh, with our instructor's presence. And it also includes social presence. You can think about that as well. <clears throat> and so we want to, and this is basically from research from Payloff and Pratt in 2007. And uh, some of the things that they point out, even though it's from a while back, is talking about creating a sense of privacy and presence on online. And I know that's something at UCO that we hold near and dear to our hearts. And so that's the reason why we don't uh, record any of our uh, videos that have students in them. <clears throat> um, and then another thing is when you're making videos for your students, you know, keep in mind that it's okay to make mistakes. They don't have to be perfect. Um, and then as Suzanne gave that great example of uh, having the icebreaker, that's also motivational. And we have, uh, we have lots of ed tech tools to make this easy and fun, or if you want to create, um, uh, you know, like funny little uh, videos for your students and stuff like that, or create a, a quick banner or photo and put some text at the top of it. <clears throat> Another important point about humanizing and personalizing text. So this has to do with, you know, how can we get our emotions across through what we're saying in our words? And so, so many times um, I've heard faculty say, well, you know, I just want to write something that's really short um, because students don't want to read, very, uh, they don't want to read too much. Um, but I think students really like to have uh, things personalized. I know that I still like to have things personalized. And so one of the things that I do, uh, that I tell myself um, when I'm sending out a, an email or if I'm sending somebody like a, a Teams message, um, I tell myself, if I can't put a smile on my face when I'm sending it, then I need to take a break and then come back to it in a few minutes. Or if you ever find yourself, if you're already in a bad mood and you're, start, you're starting to write something and it's coming out kind of snarky or critical, the good thing is in, in, on a discussion board, you can actually go back and delete it um, and edit it, but you can't do it in an email. Um, I think maybe there might be a way you could, you could um, ask to have the, e the email sent back to you. <laughs> um, and so we have to be careful um, you know, when we're doing that online. Okay, now I hit stop share. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about modeling empathy. <clears throat> and so if any of you have ever watched the video by Brene Brown on modeling empathy, it's very short. I actually have it in my packet. And so um, I would suggest watching that um, after uh, when you have time. And so, you know, I'm just thinking about how all of us have been through so much um, over these past few years. So I started working at UCO right during, uh, shortly after the pandemic began. And so, <clears throat> so I joined this, uh, this group of people during, you know, some of the most difficult times I think I've ever worked in my life. I think the only other thing I could think of is one time I uh, was, uh, had actually uh, been in an earthquake and our office was closed for three days, uh, but we weren't in the office when it happened. Um, so that was, a, you know, that was kind of a scary experience. <clears throat> but I'm just thinking of all the things that we've had, you know, um, we've had the ice storms, we've had uh, sub-zero winter weather, um, we've had the COVID-19, you know, we've had, we've had riots. I mean, <laughs> the list just goes on and on. And so, um, you know, I just want to say to all of you, you know, even when you're tired, you're still brilliant and you're still amazing. And, you know, it's that kind of feeling that we have for each other. You know, that's why we still, we, we stick it out and we stay in higher ed and because we want to help our students, but we also want to help each other. And so I just want you to know that I'm very grateful, you know, to be able to be working with such amazing, talented and strong people. Every single day, I'm amazed. And so our next slide, I'm actually just going to go with this, is, is about not being a robot. And so I have an example of my very own robot, um, whose name is Robbie. And he's from the movie um, the, the Forbidden Planet. And so Robbie could do a lot of things for me. You know, he could send out my emails. 
he could post my announcements, and he could, you know, just do a lot of things in my online class, you know, to make things easier for me so that when I go on vacation, I don't have to check anything, which would be really nice. Um, but Michelle Patansky Brock says, don't be a robot. Uh, so we want to be able to provide our online instructor's presence. And uh, the reason why that Michelle had, why she came up with that quote, the story behind it is actually, she was at a conference and she met this person and they started talking and, and she's, she told uh, this person what kind of work she does, that she teach classes online. And this lady told her, really? I always thought those classes were taught by robots. And so she was <laughs> she was like, no, they're taught by actual people. <laughs> and so I always thought that comment was just so, um, so amazing. So, but now we're gonna go to the next portion of our um, webinar, which is gonna be doing some screen sharing. So I'm gonna put in uh, some things in here into the chat. Let's see if they go in there okay. Let's see. Let's see, are you seeing anything in the chat, Brett? I don't see anything. Oh, okay, let me try it again, let's see. Okay, that's the first one. And then, wait. Books. Hey, Laura. So what we're seeing, we got the Burkansky website, but other websites I'm not seeing come through if you're pasting them. Oh, okay. So I'll just do them one at a time. <clears throat> So the first one I'm going to show you is Mich Michelle Pekansky Brock's uh, infographic and also her website. This is a really great website because each of these uh, links that she has has tons and tons of information um, helpful uh, for humanizing. So if you click on learning about humanizing, this is actually, uh, I really love this statement and the humanized online courses instructor student relationships are the connective tissue between students' engagement and rigor. And so I just love that statement. Okay, so here is uh, the infographic. And <clears throat> we're not gonna go over each section because of the time, but you can kind of scroll through here. You can see the principles that we talked about, empathy, awareness, and presence, and having trust. Mitigating the impact of stereotypes on learning, high opportunity zones, and then the eight elements. This is what we talked about last week, which was the liquid syllabus. Um, humanizing your home page, the Getting to Know You survey. If you click on this link, you can open that and get a sample of the Getting to Know You survey. Um, creating warm and wise feedback is number four self-affirming icebreakers wisdom wall this is something that has been recently added in and that's where um, students will give some ideas of what they found was like kind of like their takeaway and then they post it on the wisdom wall so the next time um, she's teaching the class other students can read that okay so the next one is this, it, we've been talking about, um, through Cole, talking about press books. And so I came across this. Let's see here. If 
file. Wait. Actually, I'm going to do this first to make sure I have enough time to show this. So this is H5P, and this is something that's really exciting is because with humanizing, we want to make sure that we do everything um, with interaction as much as possible. So I created a humanizing online instruction infographic um, for all of you. So I got this picture from the humanizing online Creative Commons photos. And then in here, this is actually um, more of a condensed version of the humanizing online infographics. So you can see what is humanizing and then facilitation, presence, don't be a robot, empathy, awareness, knowing your students. And then course design, you have the six C's. Then I put in the second page. So then you have your learning domains for like Bloom's Taxonomy, Cognitive Thinking, and then the Community of Inquiry. And so this is something I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, which is the Social Presence, Cognitive Presence, and Teaching Presence from Garrison and Archer from 2000. And then six tips for recording your video. And so you have, you know, make sure to use frontal light. So I'm using a like a ring light so that my face looks a little bit better. And be aware of what's behind you. Get a good microphone. Be real. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, you know, just practice talking into the webcams. Let's see. So this, um, and then here's a video. So this is actually kind of a long video because it's 57 minutes. Um, what I'm also going to add in is Brene Brown's um, uh, video on empathy. So now if you open up, if everyone was able to open up the um, H5P, then you can click on this link for Pressbooks. So this is something that I think is really exciting. We we're talking about um, creating Pressbooks. And so I was thinking that would be really neat for us to make one for Oklahoma, our very own humanized virtual learning book, and share it amongst the um, our regional universities. So you have designing for connection. So they have quite a bit of content in here. It's actually, I downloaded it. It's like 295 pages long. And... <clears throat> see where else um, module two oh designing for in inclusivity facilitating for connection so they cover uh, equity and in inclusivity and in virtual learning universal design for learning uh, mental health awareness Okay, does anyone have any questions? Would like to unmute and have any comments? So who would like to help me write the press books? We need some volunteers. We can, maybe what I'll do is uh, we can think of ways to collaborate and have um, humanizing ideas on how um, we can get information from faculty around the state. Oh, this is one thing I forgot to tell you. I wasn't sure how much time I had. There's gonna be an event, a humanizing event coming up in May uh, where Michelle Pekansky Brock is gonna be the keynote speaker. And you can sign up for free. It's all free. Okay, so that's that's it for me. Hey, Laura. So you might want to grab in the 
chat him and reached out and said he might want to he might want to collaborate with you on the book. Oh, okay, so, that's great. Okay. Yep. Otherwise, we are about a minute out on time. Okay, if you don't have any more questions. Okay, so we'll go ahead and end the meeting. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Thank you, Laura. Okay.